risen indeed. to Easter morning worship. We are so glad you have joined us today. On behalf of everyone at Word of Peace Lutheran Church, we are so glad you are here worshiping with us on this Resurrection Sunday. For generations, Christians have gathered to pray together, to sing together, to worship together, and to hear the word together. And although today we are not gathered in our churches as we typically are, we do gather. We gather to celebrate that death could not hold Jesus, and therefore sin and death cannot hold us. So welcome this morning. We encourage you after today to come and join us every Sunday at 945 until we can again come together in person and worship on our live stream every Sunday morning at 945. And we will continue with our Wednesday worship services at 6.30 p.m. in a time that is unprecedented. So what I encourage you all to do right now is to get out a candle, put it on your coffee table, or on your kitchen tables, light a candle as we get ready to worship together. He is risen! He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed! Let us begin our worship service. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Christ our Lord, who was crucified, has risen from the dead. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Risen Lord, we come to give you glory and praise for your great sacrifice. Yes, Lord. Alleluia! We are desperate for your love and forgiveness, and so we bow our hearts before you, Jesus, and confess now our sin before you. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we confess that we have wandered from the path you've set before us and have not always lived as you have taught us to live. We have been proud and arrogant, thinking we were the masters of our fate, and we have injured others by our actions and inactions. We have not loved you with our whole heart. Lord, we are truly sorry. Forgive us, Jesus. And by your glorious resurrection, bring us back to you. Set our hearts anew, so that we might live as true children of God. Amen. By Jesus' death and resurrection, he prepared a way for us to be brought back to life. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and the essence of love, your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, I couldn't quite hear you now. He is risen. He is risen indeed. All right, I'm beginning to hear you now as loud as you can. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
and also with you. I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Glorious and victorious risen Lord, we come before you on this Easter Sunday to give you thanks for your great sacrifice and to show our love and devotion to you. By your death and resurrection, you have brought us close to God. Reign in our hearts, Lord. Direct our paths, and when our days on earth have come to an end, bring us into your glorious kingdom. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built. O virgin Israel, again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. On behalf of the pastors and staff at Word of Peace, I am delighted to invite you to share your blessings with each other and your church by making an Easter offering. Yes, delighted, as there is no single action that creates a sense of well-being, increases our courage, and strengthens our faith more than sharing generously those things with which God has entrusted us. And we know that for many of you, your financial situations have changed, or you are worried that they will change. We see you, we hear you, and we are with you. For those of you who are still able to give, we ask that you may prayerfully consider giving a little extra at this time. And you can make those offerings on our website, wordofpeace.org, on your phone, or by mailing it in. Your gifts allow us to continue to do ministry with you and for you. Thank you for your joyful generosity. <laughs>
reading from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Miss Dunn, happy Easter. Happy Easter, Pastor Rick. It's so good to see you. It's good to see you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, definitely. Well, Pastor Rick, I brought with me some seeds today because Easter and all these beautiful flowers, they make me think of gardening, and I just love gardening. Hmm. And when I garden, I take these seeds and I plant them in the dirt, and I cover them up so carefully, and I pour some water on, I make sure there's some sunshine, and then, after some patience and a little bit of time, boom, flowers just like that. Don't you love that? Well, you know, it's, I guess it's kind of cool that those flowers come from those tiny seeds, but I'm not too excited about gardening. Oh. Are you excited about popcorn? Oh, I love popcorn. popcorn. Oh, popcorn is the best. In fact, I feel like I could eat this popcorn right now, don't you? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Let's eat it right now. I don't think it's ready to be eaten, though. Because to make good popcorn, you have to take the seeds and you put them in a pan on the stove. And then you turn up the heat. And then you put a little oil in there and you watch it carefully and you wait and you wait and you wait and then do you want to know what happened? What? Oh! Popcorn everywhere! Oh, oh. It is the best! Well, that's amazing best. how that happens from those tiny kernels. We have that popcorn, yes. you know, but it is hard to, to wait for that. That kind of reminds me of the disciples, Jesus' followers. You know, for them, all of this was so hard to believe. You know, just like it's hard to believe that a flower comes from a seed or popcorn comes from a kernel, it's hard to believe that Jesus rose from the dead for the disciples to believe that. And they had to wait to find that out. But you know what? Jesus told them that he would do that. He said that he would die, and then three days later, he would be raised from the dead. And that's an incredible thing. And... We can believe that too, just like the disciples believe that, even though sometimes it might be hard because Jesus tells us, he tells us that this is what would happen, and it did, and it is so wonderful because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, definitely. Well, let's join together in a prayer. Should we say a word of prayer? Lord Jesus, we celebrate you rising from the dead. It is so wonderful. And Lord, at times when we have trouble believing that, like we might have trouble believing that uh, from a little seed comes a flower or from a kernel comes popcorn, that Lord, we can trust what you tell us and what you show us, that indeed you have risen from the dead and that means we have life in you now and forever. It's so wonderful. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you to hear joyously the Easter gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. 
But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Later, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen this is not what we expected today is it easter is supposed to be the day that we gather in worship and then we head off and have a great brunch made by our youth and then we go gather with our friends and family and we watch young children gather easter eggs this is a day where these seats in the sanctuary would have been filled with hundreds of people gathered together and our choirs would have been singing the Alleluia Chorus, and we would have all come to church dressed in our Sunday best with big smiles on our faces, and this pastor at least would have had a haircut for the day. <laughs> but no one could have imagined this kind of a day. And the same is true for our disciples today in our gospel reading. There were no celebrations. There were no alleluia praises on that first Easter morning. In fact, Jesus' disciples were gathered in homes and they were filled with confusion. Jesus' disciples had locked themselves behind closed doors and they were terrified because they were afraid of the unknown and they were full of fear. They were in shock. How could this have happened? Jesus was the man who had changed their lives in his transformational teaching and healing. He was the one who called himself the Son of Man, and he had come to make everything new. He was the king who would liberate them from religious and political persecution. But he was dead. The Roman Empire crucified him on the cross as an example of what happens to people when they dare question the empire. What were they supposed to do now that Jesus was gone? Would the Jesus haters come and find them and do to them what they had done to Jesus? So they locked themselves inside of their homes because they were afraid because they didn't know what would happen next. Mary Magdalene was grief-stricken, and she had the same kind of fear. As she made her way to the grave that morning with tear-stained cheeks to prepare Jesus' body for burial, when she got there, the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, and when she looked inside, it was empty. And she did not shout hallelujah, and she did not dance dances of celebration. No, she waited out the side of the tomb in terror, and she wept. She was full of fear. Consumed with grief on this Easter Sunday, 
We too are locked behind our doors, afraid of the unknown with all kinds of questions. What are we supposed to do now? What are we supposed to believe now? How do we make sense out of what we are living? We start by remembering the promise of Easter. Did not Mary and the disciples remember what Jesus had told them when he was alive? Did they not witness that this man could make the blind see and the paralyzed walk and the dead rise? Do we not remember what Jesus has told us, that he came that we might have life and have it abundantly? Do we not remember that Jesus said that Jesus is the light of the world and darkness cannot overcome him? Do we not believe that Jesus said that he would have to suffer and die, but on the third day rise again? Or do we believe the lies? Do we believe that our God is a vengeance-seeking, sin-counting God who only wants to punish us and only wants our sacrifice? Do we believe that this virus is a way for God to punish us and teach us a lesson? If we believe these lies, then we believe in a God of retribution, not mercy. If we believe in these lies, then we believe that God causes suffering instead of creating healing. If we believe these lies, then we believe that God is a God of death, not life. Easter proclaims that we have a God of life and that God is not done. I know this because the grave could not hold all of Jesus in death and hell and sin. And guess what? The grave cannot hold you in death and sin and hell any longer. There isn't and wasn't a locked door that Jesus cannot go through to be with his disciples or to be with us. There isn't a tomb that he cannot stand outside of and speak Mary's name or our name. There isn't a virus or an illness that can keep God from coming to you and for you because we have a God who isn't done yet. God is a God of life. And God is not in the business of making you and I good or nice or pious. No, God is in the business of making you and I new. This is the God who freed the Israelites from slavery. This is the God who tore down the walls of Jericho. This is the God who became flesh and lived among us. And this is the God who had the audacity to eat with people others thought were unclean and to eat with prostitutes and speak with Samaritans and make the dead rise. You see, God did not stop at Jesus' resurrection because God is not done yet and God is in the business of taking all of the dead things in our lives and making them new. And new looks like healing after abuse. And new looks like an addict getting clean. And new looks like forgiveness. And new looks like doctors and nurses and researchers staring down at a virus and saying, not today on my watch. No, not today. Not today. And new looks like people worshiping in their homes to protect the most vulnerable. And new looks like every time you and I choose love over fear. Last week, 
I visited a young woman in our congregation who is dying of cancer. As if cancer isn't isolating enough, now with the coronavirus, the ability for her family to visit her is limited. Her family and her have done everything humanly possible. And her oncologists have done everything humanly possible. And we have prayed for physical healing. This is cosmically unfair. Where are you, Jesus, I thought. She is a beautiful person with young children and a loving husband. And they've done everything. But where I saw only the tomb, she sees Jesus. As I broke the bread, and I gave her the wine, and we discussed life and faith. She said that she saw Jesus in the birth of her children, in the love of her husband, in the faith that her family had passed on to her. And she saw Jesus reaching into her locked door, into her illness, and reminding her that he was present with her all the time. And even though she was not going to receive physical healing, she was at peace knowing that God was not done with her yet and would never be done with her. And God was not done with her family, nor would God ever be done with her family. She was standing outside of her tomb being a resurrection preacher to me. She was standing outside of the tomb like Mary stood outside of the tomb and said to Peter, I have seen the Lord. It may feel like Good Friday right now for all of us, but Easter is coming. God is not done and continues to reach through our locked doors into our fear, into our addictions, into our cancer, and into this virus and is loving all of us back to life because God is not done and God will never be done with us. So today, wherever you are at, whether you are at home or whether you are in the hospital, whether you are by yourself or whether you are with a few people and whatever you're facing today in your life, hear this promise on Easter Sunday. Jesus is speaking your name and Jesus says to you, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Again, I will build you. You will be built. Again, you will shake your tambourines and you will leave your houses. Again, you will dance and you will hug people that you love. Again, you will plant vineyards and gather in song because I am the God of life. I am not done. Amen.
As we now bring to mind those who might need our prayers, the church, the world, and individuals in any need, let us go to prayer to our God, the one who is not finished, the one who brings new life. Let us pray. Alleluia! God, you are sanctuary. While we lament that we cannot gather in person today for worship, we praise you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave from wherever we find ourselves this day, knowing that we are held together across time and space by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bind us together, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alleluia! God, you are creator. Open our eyes to the first fruits of new life that surround us, to budding trees, nourishing rains, warm breezes, and freshly tilled soil. Inspire our gratitude and renew our commitment to stewardship of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alleluia! God, you are reconciliation. You show no partiality among the nations, but instead call all people to the way of peace. Bring an end to conflict and division. Renew leaders and advocates for peace with a commitment to the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alleluia! God, you are healer. Hear our prayer for all who suffer, including Lynn, Dick, Autumn, for Rico, Amy, Connie, Reese and Remy, Hazel and Caitlin, for Jennifer, Diane, Bill, Jamie, Barbara, Aaron, Chelsea, Lincoln, Tim, and especially we lament the coronavirus and its incalculable suffering, the many thousands sick, the fear instilled, the loss of employment, the cancellation of plans, the overflow in hospitals, and the scarcity of supplies. Lord, strengthen medical professionals and volunteers and awaken hope and perseverance in all of us as we encounter this day the promise of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alleluia! God, you are comfort. Draw near to those who grieve, especially the family and friends of Grant Semick and Valerie Wolf. Refresh us with the promise given this Easter day that you will destroy death and that we will be made alive forever in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, source of life, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your compassionate might for the sake of him who lived, died, and rose for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! May the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you today. May it surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. Amen.